How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. In case you missed it, I built a train layout a while back. It is my largest project to date. And although I did get it to a place that I was happy with, and I called it good, I definitely didn't do as much as I had initially intended. Here's where the project is as of today. Originally, this ramp was supposed to lead down into a mining camp with some additional elements in the canyon. So I'll do that in this video. I was also going to customize this train, which has been giving me some issues recently. I've gotten a number of comments asking what happens if the train derails or stops in the tunnel, so I'll answer that question too. The first thing to do was to mark out where I wanted my new elements to go, so I took a pencil to the landscape and I drew some little squares. After that, I cut through the hard plaster layer and I removed some of the material to create some mine edits. The foam underneath here is styrofoam, which tends to go everywhere when you cut it and rip it, so I made sure to vacuum up all of it as I went to keep the mess at a minimum. I then cut some little strips of basswood to reinforce and protect those adits, and I glued them in place with some foam safe super glue. If you're unfamiliar with the term adit, that just means the entrance of a mine. I also made a little platform, put it on the top of the cliff. Kind of looks like a gallows, but the intention is that it is some kind of hoist to get things up and down from the canyon below. I then painted all the wooden elements with a dark brown and I dry brushed over top of the dark brown with a tan to help blend it into the surrounding area. I also painted the interior of those tunnels. I had this box of 1 to 70 second scale battlefield accessories, and what caught my attention was this little tower. After a little customization, it looked like the perfect little end scale head frame. I also started to make some little buildings out of balsa wood. That was taking me too much time, so I printed the rest. For the head frame, I used a little wheel from a tank and some styrene to create a pulley. I also added some little bits on the side to create the little house for the hoist. I also ran a tiny string from the hoist box up to the pulley and down toward the mine shaft that it sits above. I set the buildings aside for a bit to focus on the trains. I removed the body of the train from the trucks using some tools that I got from an iPhone repair kit. I also removed the acrylic so as not to get that dirty. After all the acrylic was out, I threw on some greeblies. I started by drilling some holes in various places around the train cars. Then I bent some wires to connect the holes. After I had bent the wires and added them to the outside of the train cars, I also added a few other greeblies to help bring these normal train cars into the Wild Imaginary West. If you're new to this series, the Wild Imaginary West is like our historical Wild West, just with more technologies and monsters that our Wild West didn't have. Uh, similar to steampunk, but less steam and punk and more electricity. After that, I took everything outside, including the train engine, and I primed it black. I wanted to give the roofs of these train cars a painted metal look, so I masked off and painted the top with a dark brown. I thought it would be more noticeable than it was in the end. Probably could have just painted the entire car with that dark brown color, and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. After the brown color was on, I peeled off the masking tape, and then I reapplied the masking tape just to the other side. I painted the wooden sides of this train car with a dark red. I then peeled off the masking tape again and I stippled on that same dark red color onto every brown surface to give it an old painted metal look. Like I said, I'm not sure if there's much of a difference between the metal surfaces and the wooden surfaces on this train or if it even communicates metal as much as it looks like Tom Cruise's armor from The Last Samurai. In order to help sell the metal look just a little more, I went over all of the edges with a metallic paint. After the train cars were painted, I sprayed on a layer of dust. 
In order to solve the train running issues that I mentioned at the beginning, I actually went and found an identical engine to put on the other end and give the train a little more oomph around those corners. I also think it looks kind of cool. I then put the windows back into the train cars and I put the train cars back onto their chassis and that was the train done. I moved the train back over to the track and then I went back to working on the buildings. I took all of the buildings outside and I primed them black and I also included this little wolf figure which I'm going to be painting as a giant coyote. I kept all the buildings mostly the same color because unlike the town above, these are all dirty work buildings with very little need for any artistic flair. Then again, I might repaint some of these roofs later on. After dry brushing some dust onto all of those buildings, I moved over to the coyote. I painted this little wolf here like a coyote because that's a little more fitting for a desert environment. He may look small at this scale, but if he were life-sized, his shoulders would be about 10 feet off the ground. Uh, that's a big coyote. After most of the painting was done, I dry fit the buildings into their positions. And the ground was a little uneven in places, so I went back with some sand, leveled that out, just to help all the buildings sit a little more flush. I sealed all of the sand in place with some isopropyl alcohol first and then watered down white glue. After that had dried, I went back with an airbrush and I added some paths between the buildings. Maybe made it a little too dark, but I did want to show that this was a mining town with mining equipment and people tracking dirt out from within the mine. I ended up deciding to paint a couple of the roofs a different color, and then I glued the coyote in place. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've had a lot of comments asking what happens if the train derails or gets stuck in the tunnel. So if you'll follow me around this way, I will show you why that's not a problem. I knew that long term this train would be sitting in a corner so there was no need to finish the back. And because of that, I was able to leave the tunnel open so I could access it whenever I needed to. The last thing I knew I wanted to add to this train set were some people. I went to the hobby store and I found some end scale people, picked out the ones that looked best for a wild west, I took them outside and I primed them black. I used some double sided tape to hold the figures down to the board while I painted them. They are pretty tiny so I didn't go into too much detail, but once I had all of the main colors on I applied a wash, I really helped add a bunch of contrast in a very simple way. I then glued the townsfolk into their positions, and I set them up in a way that made it look like everyone was watching a classic high noon duel. I then glued the remainder of the figures down into the canyon below. Unfortunately, they are missing the action in the town. And after that last miniature was glued in place, I called it good again. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun revisiting this project and adding some things that I missed the first time around. If you'd like to see a new train build at some point in the future, let me know in the comments. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.